Hello everyone, welcome to Karma Hub. Today we have with us Whitney Schrader, who is truly a dynamic speaker and advocate for freeing the mind and expanding the spirit of well-being. We, we discuss the paradigm shift that we're all facing and the doors of opportunity that we're stepping into. And the ideas and philosophies around the, the decision to heal one's inner self, our true self. As we got further into the conversation, Whitney became more and more impassioned, and I, I was so blown away by her openness, her intensity, and authenticity. There, there's truly a message in this discussion for everyone, so please stay tuned, and oh, don't forget to hit that Karma Hub subscribe button and the like button. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoy it. Part of this paradigm shift is coming back to the idea that this, that unconditional love for ourselves is what we're here to embody and experience. Everybody is on their own journey, but we're all here for a collective mission. Like part of the paradigm shift is to unlearn everything we've been taught. And that can be scary because then we say, who do I rely on? Who do I trust? Who is giving me this real information? And that, that moment is where you can, you can access your soul's wisdom versus your ego. We're always taught what to think as opposed to how to think. Start getting back to the how and why and what you truly want to believe in, that magic is very real, that kindness exists, and that humans are not just innately bad to each other. That is a learned behavior. So much of what we think is natural about humans is not. It's conditioning over thousands of years, and we are here to end it. So you're a, a shaman, a intuitive empath, um, intuitive chef. I think that's very cool. Uh, a life coach, Reiki master, holistic metaphors, metamorphosis practitioner. Yes, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. And and so you. You offer distance and in-person um, energy healing sessions. Uh, you do intuitive card readings, group healing sessions, individual and group ceremonies, and life coach coaching sessions. Yes, you, you do a lot. That's fantastic. So, how what what got you into all of this? Why why do you do this? What catapulted me into this was actually um, deep trauma that I experienced. Um, it was about 2016 and I had been going through Lyme disease. I had been suffering from that for about, since I was 19 um, and doctors, they were just writing me off. I was having these crazy weird symptoms. Um, I couldn't walk. I had to stop playing sports. I had to stop working. I, could, I had to stop coaching because I was coaching. I was doing sports lessons and um, nothing was working. Um, and I ended up finding, I finally found a Lyme disease specialist and it, who was giving me natural supplements, but my body was so toxic. There was so much pain stored that I ended up having adverse, um, effects. So I was on the medication and my friend, Chelsea, she said, there was a Reiki master. She's also a behavioral psychologist. Why don't you go take a session with her? I really feel like this is something that would resonate with you. Cause I had, I had done psychology. Like I was working through anxiety, depression. Um, it was like this tension building. I felt like I was in a crock pot and I hadn't taken the top off. So no, I when, went to this. When race. was this? Yep. When this, was this? So this, this had been building for years, but when I, that when I first, when I first went to the Reiki master, it was 2017, April 24th. I'll never right. forget April 24th, 2017, um, I had started Reiki, I had started acupuncture, and then I started hypnotherapy. But when I went to this Reiki master, and again, never heard of any of this before, um, meditation, never even met somebody in my entire life that ever mentioned meditation or anything, which is wild looking back on it. And she starts, she's like, all right, I'm, you know, you might feel something, you might feel a little different, you might feel some energy. Um, you might cry, you might have a release. And um, at the time, I had the emotional intelligence to know something was wrong, but I had no idea what I was in store for. So she starts putting her hands on me. She's giving me energy healing and I just lose it. I start hysterically crying. 
my body starts vibrating. She's doing these deep tones. She's like, like the sound of ohm. She's, she is crying. And this release happened. It, it felt like somebody, Lauren, it felt like somebody took a boulder off of me and threw it like wow. boulder after boulder after boulder. And like my whole life was flashing before my eyes. And afterwards she was just like, oh my God, I've never seen a release like this. And, and then she, then we go into the intuitive healing part after I like calm down I'm she's releasing the energy. Um, she says to me, she goes, I don't normally say things like this to my clients. She goes, but you're not from here. And I was like, yeah, I know. I was born in Springfield, Virginia. And she's like, no, no, no. Like, you're not from Earth. And I was just like, like something <laughs> in me, some like literally, right, right. and like, you know, normal rat, like if you look at it today, like you don't just say that to people unless you're prepared. And this woman, this amazing woman, she was like, you can handle this. She goes, you're not from here. She goes, look up the term starseed. She goes, you came to this planet to help with the ascension. And I'm at the time, I'm like, what are you talking about? But there was a part of me that knew. So part of me that was like, oh my God, it all makes sense now. So then she starts telling me to look up Archangel Gabriel. She goes, I know, you're, I know you don't practice religion, but look up Archangel Gabriel. Look up what it means about the ascension of humanity and look up the violet flame by St. Germain. And that's when my entire life changed. After that, there was something in my consciousness that woke me up because for months I had felt like I had, I was, I was watching this show called Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but they, yeah, you've seen mildly, it? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes. And I was watching it and I started having these breakdowns. I started crying to my girlfriend at the time. Um, I was like, I know that I meant to do something here. Um, this show is really resonating with me. I don't know what's happening to me. Um, and she had no idea what was happening. She thought it was crazy. Wow. She thought I was batshit crazy. And so every, it was like every moment in my life where I could feel this voice calling to me, um, it made sense in that moment. So since then, I, um, I started looking up. Um, Native, that's when the Native American shaman started coming to me. I started, my guide started coming in. Um, I started to, wow. this, I started having these profound synchronicities and experiences that just, it felt like I was under a spell, but a good one. It was like everything, everything started lifting from me. Like my eyes were just open. And ever since then, that's when it started. Well, that, that's quite an amazing way to start your, your journey. Um, and, yeah, and that was, and, that uh, was what, yeah. just five years ago? Five years ago. And Holy since moly. that mo yeah, since that moment, my grandfather started coming in. This was the even more intense part of the journey. Because my grandfather passed away when I was 10. And ever after that Reiki session, I, I had like about a month of a Reiki session. And well, I won't go into the whole story, but basically I had a near-death experience, June of 2017. I was I was I was on a hike and I started to get sun poisoning. I got lost in the middle of the desert. And I I was I, I was getting, it wasn't sun poisoning. It was like a sunstroke. I was literally like, I could feel my organ shutting down and wow. I was in the middle. I, and I was on top of this, like, 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 and you know, you get delirious and stuff like that. Right. But I was, I was led basically to the top of this roof. And all of a sudden I, the clouds started coming in on me and seven faceless white angels came to me. And like, it was like, I went up into the clouds and then one came right in front of me. And after that, I don't remember anything. I woke up and I was never the same. My whole life flashed before my eyes. I saw my future. I saw my past. I saw my present. And um, I, I still can't explain that. So after that, those types of things started happening. So, so did someone find you or were you able to find your way out of it? Or no, they um somebody somebody found me and called the ambulance. Um, and gotcha. so I was spent the house, I spent two weeks in the hospital. Um and uh, recovering from that. But I felt it was like a rebirth. It was like, I was fine. They were like, I don't know how you are alive right now. Um, but um, yeah, after that, my grandfather started coming to me and he led me on this scavenger hunt to find family heirlooms that ended up waking me up. I found this children's book that um, 
I, you know, you know, the children's books that you were read when you're younger, right? You just kind of remember them like this book, just, I was living at my parents' house at the, at the time. I, I had broken up with my girlfriend. I was living in Columbia and my grandfather came in and started leading me to these artifacts that were in my parents' house. That's, that started to wake me up to um, the mystic, um, mysticism, Gnostic embodiment, which is when knowledge comes alive. Um, I started, it started to lead me to different mystery schools, um, every single culture, all the cultural prophecies. Um, to this day, it's, it still happens, but that's how I woke up. My grandfather is one of my guides and he led me on this scavenger hunt. Almost, he was speaking in code to me. Um, and that's how my awakening started to really help me um, process the spiritual aspect of everything. So yeah, wow. it, it, it's out of a movie. Like you can't even, I, I have trouble verbalizing. Yeah, and I had no, I, I mean, I've known you for a couple of years. I had no idea that all of this is as recent as it seems like it, as it is. Um, five years ago, not even. Wow. It'll be five years in April. I know. So you're really it's, taking it's, the deep, deep dive. I mean, you're, you know, of course you've worked on me a number of times. You have, you hold a, a Reiki circle. And, um, you really pack a punch, <laughs> you know, you know, your stuff. You, I mean, you, you hear it, you sense it, you convey it, you, you know, and, and you could I could feel your energy. And it's, it's, it's really quite amazing. So, um, Thank you to hear you've been doing it for such a short time. I mean, I think five years in this realm is, is pretty short. I think, I mean, I, I've been in now for 11 years and I think that's pretty short because this was none of this was part of my belief system. I guess you weren't very familiar with any of it. I wasn't very familiar with, I mean, I've heard of like psychics and all of that. And I used to just kind of laugh, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, ha, 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 funny. Yeah. 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 Ha ha funny. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, but now, you know, I, I would say a lot of my, friends kind of fall into that category and granted some of them are funny, but that's because they have a sense of humor and not because what they're doing is weird. I mean, or, or ridiculous. It's just, they're, I mean, it, it's just, uh, it's amazing stuff and it's very helpful. And, uh, to, to think yes. that, that, that the universe works like this to me is just, uh, you know, pretty, pretty inspiring and, um, and magical. It really is. It's pure magic. Um, it, it's um, one of the other things I, I didn't know if I was going to talk about it. And this will probably be a topic for another day. But the um, the moment where my soul awakened and um, was June, the end of I was being led to Sedona, Arizona because of my Lyme disease. That's how I ended up getting the near death experience. Um, but after that, I. Um, um, somebody led me, I was looking online at a photograph that my friend had posted, and it was a picture of my soul counterpart, my twin flame. And all of a sudden I received all the downloads. It was like the near death, before the near death experience, all the Reiki sessions, everything of my entire life, every life that I've ever lived was downloaded into me at that point. And it was like, I know you, I remember you, but it wasn't just, I remember you. It was, I remember me. I recalled every single moment I've ever been in space, every, every planet I've ever lived on, every moment that I've ever lived on earth, every moment that I've ever healed, every trauma, every breath that I've ever taken in this lifetime, it all made sense. Wow. So um, the love in my heart, burst open all the barriers, all of the blocks, everything that I had kept in, that I was suppressing, that I was ashamed of, that I felt guilty of, everything just melted in that one moment. And that one moment changed my life forever. So wow. that, yeah, the power of love is limitless, um, but deep, deep, true, spiritual, unconditional love. So that, um, that can be a conversation for another day, but I, I did not want to leave that out because um, there's a lot of um, controversy around our twin flames real and whatnot, but um, part of my journey here is specializing in relationships and connections and being on the accelerated path of the twin flame Kundalini awakening. So I just wanted, whoever's going to be listening to this, I just wanted to voice that because that is part of my truth. So so yeah. I, I know we had talked briefly the other day, and one of the things you had mentioned, one of the topics I wanted to, to hit on 
you mentioned uh, navigating the paradigm shifts. You know, I know there's a lot of shifting going on. Um, um, and I wanted to get your take on what you think that is, what that paradigm shift is, like what's happening. Hmm. Yeah, so like the paradigm, as you know, the structures of our society are, are crumbling um, because they've all been manufactured by, by false lies and false truths about us as people. Um, part of the paradigm shift, the number one thing of this paradigm shift is releasing the victimhood, releasing this idea that we are victims. Um, because when you're in that victimhood, then everything around you, your whole life, you feel like life is happening to you instead of for you. So when you can look now, all of us, we've all been through some crazy stuff. We've all been victimized, but we are not victims. We all chose to come here. So part of the paradigm shift is re-remembering that we all chose to come here to help with the great awakening of ascension. Ascension is the shift in consciousness, right? It's that, right. that point where once you learn something, there's no going back. So it's these consecutive moments of perspective shifts that contribute to the overall paradigm, the structures, the scaffolding of society that is crumbling because we came here to demolish that. Everything that's happening right now is a controlled demolition within ourselves and outside of ourselves. Part of this paradigm shift is coming back to the idea that this, that unconditional love for ourselves is what we're here to embody and experience. Everybody is on their own journey, but we're all here for a collective mission. So we live on earth, right? Okay. We also are part of a solar system. We're part of a universe where other intelligent beings live. There's, we, we're, we're part of the paradigm shift is releasing the fake news, fake science, and fake history. Now, I recommend anybody that's listening to this right now, do your own research about that. There is some phenomenal websites out there. One of mine that I use is Ascension Glossary. It speaks to the unity vow, to the collective vow of cosmic citizenship of Earth. Earth being, the, with, as a citizens, being a part of the conglomerate of larger federations, of larger galactic communities, of having our cosmic citizenship. A lot of this is spoken in the law of one, which is basically just, it's, a, it's the law of one is the governing body of those eternal truths. There's natural law and then there's man-made law. This is about getting back to the natural law of humans. Most of us don't know what that is because we, when we came in and incarnated in earth, we signed a contract, signed a contract with God, source, whoever, to have amnesia when we came in. So most of the stuff we don't remember, and that's okay. Part of this paradigm shift is allowing ourselves to have those new experiences so that we can be triggered in to our, our galactic memories that we've all lived on earth multiple times before, that we don't just come into earth once and then we die and we rot in the ground. Like that is a... Um, it's a phenomenal manipulation of our soul's truth. We, you know, you have fate and then you have destiny. Right now, the paradigm shift is about all of us leading us towards our own destiny to re-remember ourselves as our most natural, highest expression, not the expression that we are in these manufactured, man-made systems on Earth. So is, is, is that... Is this something you're saying that we will rediscover regardless of what our beliefs are currently? Absolutely. Uh, because, Absolutely. you know, obviously there's a lot of people that don't really buy into really much of what you just said. <laughs> so, and and um, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> that's the case with many topics. So, so there's this huge division going on right now. And, you know, people weigh heavy on one side, people weigh heavy on the other side. And, yes. um, but I guess what you're proposing is that regardless of what side you're currently weighing in on, you are still a part of this shift, whether you believe in it or of it, or um, yes. it, it will present itself and, um, and, and you will be an integral part of it. It's our evolutionary destiny. Um, part of the way you take your power back is by, is by learning new knowledge, is not just by saying, oh, somebody told me this. Like everything here that I'm saying, 
I hope that no one just sits there and takes me at my word. Go research it. Like, well, you know, even the government, I guess this past, I guess a year ago or so, started talking about aliens, and that they're real. And, it, and it's interesting to me because I have some, well, most of my family, most of my friends are very analytical and don't believe in much of what I believe in these days. Uh, and and that's, that's fine. I'm learning to get more comfortable with that. Um, yes. <laughs> um, but, you know, when I've had the conversation about like aliens and they're like, you know, that's all hogwash. Mm-hmm. But when the government came forth and said that aliens exist and that these, um, you know, the Navy pilots and so forth and so on are, are seeing them and that they're confirmed and they're legitimate people, legitimate sightings. They were like, OK, well, so the, the government believes in it. So. So I do. Yeah. So now. So now I believe in it. Um, yes. That's the paradigm we're in right now. The shifting. Yeah. Um, so, so it is interesting. Um, you know, now what you're talking about is a lot further, you know, that we're part of a federation and there's a whole, whole everything going on. Um, and, you know, that, of course, is a very big pill to swallow. But, um, you know, if, if they exist, they're probably and we don't see them very easily or they they, they, they could be. Lauren, we us. are them. We are them. OK, fair enough. Okay. Yes. I, we I, are I them. That. Yes. 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 I've, I've heard that as well. <laughs> that's yes, the, yes. That's, no, but I get what you're saying. I just yeah. had to add that in. Like we we are the extraterrestrials that came back to Earth. We are embodied in human form. But but like with all the conditioning, you tell that to someone, you're like, oh wow, why don't you go? You need to you need to go on Big Pharma and get some medication. That's been the programming, right? As, most of ascension system, or most of the depression and anxiety that we are medicated on is actually the ascension systems. Because our, our spiritual immune systems are reacting to these manufactured, this manufactured society. Like we get scared when we feel depressed or anxious, but if you're not feeling depressed or anxious, like then you're just conforming to this system. So like, it's, it's a lot to take in at first, but remember we, what, what the main thing is instead of moving out of cognitive dissonance or dismissing it, if you can remain in that frequency of curiosity, Mm-hmm. then that is the paradigm shift. Instead of just dismissing it because somebody told you that it's right. not true, let's get curious. Let's get curious about it. And there's so much, and also there's so much legitimate information out there. Why not explore it? Why right. not? Well, I was, I, actually, it was of? the last, last video that I did um, that you know, I was talking about the fact that there, there's a lot of unusual stuff that I believe in these days, right? Nice. So when other people present their unusual stuff, I'm like, well, a lot of the stuff that I believe in these days is, is not something that, I mean, it was all fairy tale stuff to me, you know, 10 years ago, right? Um, but now I, I've come to realize when someone else says all of this ridiculousness is, is, is truth, I'm like, well, my truth is in this ball of ridiculousness. Why, why can't I at least <laughs> open my mind up to the possibility that all of this bizarro stuff is also real? So I, I think to your point, um, at least opening your mind up to the possibility of you, you, you didn't think were truth in the past, you know, just kind of open your mind up to the possibility. And that's a more wondrous more magical place to live yes yes we we are programmed out of the magic of the world and we are we are told this is a very physical reality like if it's not in front of me then it doesn't exist right 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 but yeah because these aliens like, yeah. these aliens well you were saying that we're, we're aliens i'm like well that's fine we might be but but i can see that alien in front of me like i could see you Mo- tip what I think is aliens, I, I can't see, like, or at least I don't want to be seen or I don't know, but I, that's you know. condition. Like where, like, at, like take every thought captive where like your identity, your definition of alien, where did you get it from movies, TV, like focus on where your thoughts and beliefs are originating from. And then from there, that's where the curiosity can begin. And if we look at it, like you can, like part of the paradigm shift is to unlearn everything we've been taught. 
And that can be scary because then we say, who do I rely on? Who do I trust? Who is giving me this real information? And that, that moment is where you can, you can access your soul's wisdom versus your ego. The ego wants you to stay in place. It doesn't want you to change. The ego will sacrifice your own happiness and destiny just so that you stay in the same. Unless you're being attacked by a bear, your ego most of the time is we, we need it. We need the ego because we have to have personalities to be incarnated on earth. But when you sure. start coming from the soul, then you start having more compassion. You start having more curiosity. You start remembering that magic that's always been here. The way the universe works, the natural laws are very different than man-made laws like energy. We are energetic beings, the law of attraction that starts getting into the natural laws of the universe, vibration, frequency, like what you're putting out, you will receive back. Like that's, that is a universal natural law, you know? And so like, or the different frequencies of appreciation of gratitude, when you are in that frequency, then you are attracting more of that. Um, It's more about allowance as opposed to force. So everything that we've ever been taught and, and what you can do is you could step back even further. Cause you're like, well, I was taught this, or then, you know, how are we going to defeat the powers that be? And it's like, we are new earth humans. Like we did not come here to perpetuate the falsities of the, of the false narratives. Like when you realize that you are part of something greater than yourself, then you will search for that. Like whatever you're looking for, you will find. If you want to find proof that aliens don't exist, you'll find it. But deep down, we all know. And the other question is question whatever the media is pumping out, whatever the media is trying to get you to believe, like most of the time it's, it's the complete opposite. And then it's like, well, why would they want to do that to us? So then you get into the victim mentality, but then, so then what you can do, go higher, access those truths. Ah, we came here to earth to finally end the thousands of years of tyranny against humanity, that nothing that we have ever been taught. There's a sliver of truth. But look at the division, like look at the agendas that are happening out there and really tune in. We are, we are not taught, we're always taught what to think as opposed to how to think. Start getting back to the how and why and what you truly want to believe in, that magic is very real, that kindness exists and that humans are not just innately bad to each other. That is a learned behavior. So much of what we think is natural about humans is not. It's conditioning over thousands of years, and we are here to end it. Where a lot of us has, have been incarnated into very, very challenging ancestral lineages. They've given us a lot of gifts, but we've also been given and passed down grief and suffering and sadness and pain. And, it's, and a lot of that can be really hard when we just think, oh, that's just me. No. We are, we are, our goal is to access our original divine blueprint. What is a blueprint? It's the instructions to build something, right? It's instructions to manifest. What's happened over time is that humanity's blueprint has been hijacked. And I I don't want to get too much into all that, but just the general ideas, because people can go research this for themselves because it's out there, but just knowing that we, ha- we are here to access our original divine blueprint, our original set of instructions, our DNA, right? The DNA that holds the instructions of our emotions, of our beliefs, our thoughts, of everything that we are. So we have this opportunity to access those teachings, like the law of one. That's what the law of one is. It's the eternal body that's guarding those sacred blueprints for humanity, Um and so, so yeah, do you think all of this uh, struggle that we're going through right now, do you think it's going to get even more challenging before it gets better? Yes, of course. And that's the beauty of it because all of this, that we were that's, struggling. That's a great spin. That's, a, that's the beauty of it's, it. Okay. <laughs> it's the beauty. It's, it's phenomenal because now everything that was unconsciously playing in the background, boom, it's in front of us now. Right. So, we so it's going to be more challenging it. because you're going to challenge, you're going to have challenge within you know, among yourself, like within yourself. I'd say there's more challenges, but it will not be more challenging. So what I mean, hear me out. So like we will, we will have more challenges, 
but we will have the tools and resources and frequency and energy necessary to move through those challenges into the triumphs, into the glory, into, into change, into transformation. Because without challenge, how can you transform? When you're in your comfort zone and you're sitting in your comfort zone, you don't want to change. You're good where you are. That's ego. We are going to be challenged more, but I don't feel if you're doing the work and you're opening up and you're curious, then it will not be more challenging. So I Makes look sense. at it. I look, yes, I look at it as that's how I see it. Um, and just, I mean, after 30 years of suffering, I, I'm no longer suffering, but I'm challenged every single day. But I have the tools and necessary and the mind, I have the, the mental clarity that I am so supported and that I'm not doing it alone. When you feel like all of us have been made to believe, oh, you're just humans thrown on earth and life is hard and life sucks. No, but we have experienced these challenges, but we have, we came here with everything we need inside of us. That's not even a cliche form. We literally have access. It's like um, you're, you're a secret agent and you're on a mission and you have comms in your ear, right? Communications in your ear. And you're like, all right, where do I go now? There's somebody on the computer like with that um, that's looking at the keyboard that can see more than you, right? Like a football game, right? I know you watch football. You got the coaches on the sideline and then you got the coaches in the press box. Why are they in the press box? Because they can see the whole field and what's happening. They can see the whole play transform. They can see where the defense is at certain parts. They see more. So you access the press boxes, the coaches in the press box, which are your guides, your higher self, source. You're not just going out on the field. Oh, let's throw a Hail Mary. I mean, unless, unless you're Josh Allen and Buffalo Bills, then you can do anything. But, <laughs> right. okay. but yeah, we're having these more opportunities to access the coaches that have been there before that ancient wisdom. So how, how do you, what are some of the things that you do to help people kind of break through that veil? Um, you know, we're, um, we had mentioned that we're going to talk a little bit about energy medicine and I think that's yeah. really important. Um, because it, it, it lifts a lot of the um, onion rings that a lot of people aren't familiar they even have, you know, sometimes, right? Yes. Um, and yes. it brings up amazing, wondrous surprises. Yes. Um, but w- what are some of the things that you can help people out with and like through energy work? So part of the energy healing that I do is retrieving the lost parts of the soul. When we have a trauma, we, there's a lot of times we disassociate from the body. We take that trauma in order to cope and we put it out. We go, we move outside of our body. Part of what the energy healing that I do, first of all, the first thing that I do is I help release the guilt and shame of being who you are and what you've been through. When you can release the guilt and shame, then you open up. Then you open up to change. You open up to the beliefs. You stop, you stop hating yourself for who you are and what you've been through and your challenges that guilt, shame cycle. Oh, I should be doing this. I should be doing that. So part of what you do is retrieving those lost aspects of you in order to regain your power from within. Part of what I do is I work with the energetic systems of the body and the cells of the body, which hold the memories. Like our cells hold the memories of our trauma, right? So I access the energies using the universal life force that is within us and around us to help rebalance and recalibrate the body so that it can work at the optimal level in order to access and access what it needs. I'm not healing. I'm not healing the person I'm accessing the energy and I'm being a conduit for the healing. So part of what I do is I help people empower themselves using what they already have within them. But part of that is recalibrating the chakras the chakras are, are each a different, high, um, highly conscious part of us. So when we can rebalance and clear out the gunk in the chakras, they can spin optimally. So then it's like, it's like repowering your energy center so that you can receive the information. You can trust your intuition. You can, you can shift your beliefs without being in fear. Part of the other thing that the energy does is that recalibrates the nervous system so you're not in fight or flight anymore. A lot of us, you can go to a psychologist. They have their places when you can talk about things. But if you're not releasing that energy, it's like being on a spin cycle in the washing machine and recircling dirty water. You have to, you have to take the clothes out. You have to, you have to clean your washing machine. Good analogy. Yes. You have to get an oil change. Your vehicle, our vehicles 
We need tune-ups. You have to change the oil. You have to get the windshield wipers so you can see clearly, right? You got to rotate your tires. You got to put air in your tires so you can keep going. Um, so part of what I work with is treating, you can treat the ailments physically. You can release the trauma from the body. And just by one session, like a lot of my clients after one session, they, th that, that initial film, that initial boulder that was on for them, that, that was on them was lifted. And now they can hear better. They could see better. They're receiving messages and they're trusting themselves because they're not stuck in the past. Part of what happens with trauma is we, our body no longer knows if we're in the past or present. So we are reliving our traumas daily. And it can be like, we can, so when you learn that a trigger is actually a blessing, then you can move through it. But if your energy field is stock full of other people's energy or your old emotions or traumas, when you were a child, you are literally reliving and you're in a constant cycle. So anybody can talk to you as much as you want. But that energy has to leave. Um, so through energy so what, medicine, you could basically fl flush the system energetically. Yes. Yes. It's a detox. It's an energetic detox of the system so that your body, your body, your physical body, your mind, your spirit, and your emotional body can act and rebalance at an optimal level that is in, al that is in alignment with your highest good, not out of fear. You are reprogrammed to love. And that is in everybody. When you truly believe that you have a hundred percent ability to heal, then that belief fuels, that fuels the healing process. If you don't believe you can heal, then you're not going to heal. You might get some relief, but if you're stuck in that victim mentality of I can't do this, or this is too much, that's, that's part of the ability to reset the emotional body so that you're not reliving trauma. Wow. Yeah. So um, a couple, a couple things that I had written down here that really registered or um, uh, resonate resonated with me is turn your baggage into your toolbox. Uh, yes. Turning your baggage into your toolbox. Yes. And then also the magic in the mundane. That yes. one really resonates with me. I, I love that. Um, yes. But yes. Yes. But yes, turning the baggage in your, into your toolbox. Um, so I guess that kind of, uh, if you have some particular issues, you use those issues as, as leverage, as your friend, as something that you recognize and can build off of. Um, yeah. Yeah. Tell yes. me a little bit about that. So it's, um, it's kind of like the idea of tensegrity, right? You know, you ever seen those sculptures that you're like, how is that standing upright? Each part is moving and using itself to balance in a different way. So when you can get to the part of, when you can think of it as tensegrity, as far as your baggage, everything that we came with, we chose to experience in this lifetime. That goes to the higher truths. So when you're talking about this magic or turning your baggage into the toolbox, when you can at least open up to the idea that you came here for a mission, that you are a soldier in a, not in a violent way, but a warrior, then you know that, and you have that, you have that trust like I trust that God source, whoever is going to provide me with the abundance that I need to heal. Then every, it's a game changer that trust that you are taking care of. You trust that the universe is always conspiring in your favor. That changes the whole energy. So like when you have a challenge, part of, part of the challenges that we incarnate in are challenges that we've had from other lifetimes that we innately know. I didn't just pick up this energy healing in this lifetime. This has been lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. So the moment that I chose a different, that I chose to experience Reiki, that was, a, I made a different choice. I made a different choice so I could choose a new experience because I believed that I could heal. I believed in myself. So from that new experience, I was able to alchemize myself I was able to alchemize my body. I was choosing something new and, oh my God, there's a lot of thoughts coming in right now. Uh, <laughs> the, ener the energy, the energy is wild. So you have that baggage, you have that gift and skill. And sometimes that challenge, when you approach it with belief and curiosity, all of a sudden that gift gets downloaded into you. And then you're able, you're able to, you're able to overcome it. Part of our challenges are also to allow other people 
to um, allow ourselves to be vulnerable, allow ourselves to open up to other people's skills and gifts. Like I came to Nourishing Journey, I was a hot mess. Like I, I was two years into my awakening. I had, I was, I had been doing my own energy healing, but I came here and it was like this sanctuary. It was, and I allowed myself to be vulnerable. I opened up, I trusted. And that's how my gifts started to come online even more. So your baggage, like your tests are your testimony. And also what, as you heal part of the baggage into a toolbox is releasing the guilt and shame of what you've been through, releasing the guilt and shame of who you are and what you've been through. Because when you're in that cycle with victimhood, oh, I feel sorry for myself. Oh, I'm such a bad person. Like when you can initially clear out that energy, um, even going from fear to curiosity, then you're able to access the, the, the tools within you in order to alchemize it. It's part of the alchemy of the soul. And when you start vibrating in the curiosity, the universe will provide you with people to help clarify and get you in that new direction. So part of the baggage into the toolbox is part of the magic in the mundane. Part of the things like, instead of going, we're not going through the emotion, the motions anymore. Everything that we've ever been through has been for a reason, has been or divinely ordained, divinely orchestrated and divinely guided. And so if you can be in that energy, you don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to have everything figured out. But what you do know is that you're going up that spiral staircase and it's disintegrating behind you. You're never going back to the way you were. You can't, not on this journey. So being able to also accept that this is part of your evolutionary destiny. That baggage that you came with is just food. It's like, feed me, feed me. I'm ready. Let's do this. I'm hungry to grow. I'm hungry for change and I can do this. So having just that energy yeah, man, like a running back, like the running back, or like, for example, when you're playing sports, you're not going to get mad at the defenders. I mean, you might get mad because they blocked your shot, but that's their job. That's their job. And sometimes the best defenses make that offense that much better, right? Like though that defense that, you know, the, every year you play, you know, county championships, you're like, oh, you know, that high school has the best defense. That is your biggest motivation. So what do you do? You work hard in the off season. You try trick plays. You try out new things. Like you are fueled by those challenges. And it all it takes is that one moment to get over that one challenge and that one moment to trust, oh my God. And, and then you're there. Then there's no stopping you. But you have to believe. Like believing is seeing. That's the magic of it. It's not seeing is believing. When you believe something, it will manifest in your life. Love it. Believing is seeing. That's the natural laws of the universe. When you are vibrating and you're like, yes, that exists. I believe that the universe is conspiring in for me. Okay, universe, surprise me. Wow me. Every day I ask the universe for that and they, it comes through in, in a small way, in a big way, whatever I'm ready for. You are very inspiring. Thank you very much. You, you, uh, oh, of course. I, I love this. This is fantastic. So are you, man. You really, you really know how to hold the space for an awesome conversation. You really do. Thank you. Um, yes. So let's see. I had written down here uh, this little sentence that I really enjoyed: overcoming our fear of what people think about us and bring in a climate ah, yes. that cultivates safety, curiosity, as opposed to fear and defensiveness. Yes. I know we all struggle with that. Yes, we're programmed. We're we're programmed to do that, right? From yep. the very beginning. You do this, you're a good boy. You do this, you're a bad boy. Do this and you get a reward. Like we're Pavlov's dogs. Like we've been, right. we're, exactly. ring, we, they, exactly. they ring they ring the dinner bell and we salivate, you know? Like it's it's that simple in, in that way. Um, uh, but I did I, want to, I you know, you've actually spoken a lot of some amazing transformation that you've been a part of. Um, during any of your sessions, I mean, I'm sure... I would imagine you've you've witnessed from time to time some amazing amazing transformations uh, occurring. Um, yes. Can you can you share some experiences? Yeah. Yes. Um, one of the one of the the ladies that I'm working with right now. I'll, I'll keep it. I won't say her name, but she had a stroke. Um, she got hit by a car. She's had physical trauma. Um, she's had 
multiple types of abuse growing up. And she spent the last decade in the pharmaceutical system, in Western medicine, um, and nothing was working for her, her face. She, she had trouble speaking. Um, she, uh, everything, walking, just existence was just, it was, it was depleting, you know, like you just want to get better and you just want to heal. And, um, I've been doing co-treatments with one of my colleagues, Vidya. She works on myofascial release, which works with the connective tissue in the body to right. restore it to balance and the elasticity. And, um, and we've been working with her for about four months now. And, um, and we've had some of the most profound sessions where she came in there limping and came out of the session walking fully aligned and she could speak again. Like she could barely wow. speak before. Like it was profound, like, like literally like walking like this. And then she walks out of there and she's never went back to it. It wasn't just a one-time thing. Wow. Every session she, she came into the session with deep trauma, deep ancestral pain, and you could physically see it lifting from her body. And she walked out of there. She was able to walk. She could barely get herself on the, on the, on the massage table. And she got herself up off of the table and walked out of there without needing assistance. Um, it was profound. And she, you said she that that change has it stuck with her. Like she has not gone back yes. to that. Yes. And now, now she, she does sound healing. She has advocated for her health in so many ways. She can speak. She has more clarity. I mean, I'm talking not just a lot, like transformational, like you wouldn't even recognize her. Um, the way that she speaks about herself is different. The way that she believes, like she believes in her healing. She didn't believe it before. And to watch her walk, to watch her be able to sit down and not be in pain, to watch her be able to pronunciate her words without slurring. Wow. It, and like, she has feeling, she had a huge scar on her head. And that like, that was, that was affecting her motor skills and her, um, her maxial nerves. And she, she doesn't have migraines anymore. She got off a lot of her pharmaceutical painkillers and pain medicine. She, her pain, it, it's just drastic. It's a drastic improvement. That, um, that's amazing. I mean, I, the stuff that I see is just over the top. I mean, I, I hold a, a Reiki circle as well. Um, and these days, because of COVID, it's generally done virtually. And that's all very weird and bizarre and amazing and magical. Um, and, you know, I to me, what's so neat is that when we have new people come, I would say 60% um, of the time we have someone new hops on the, the virtual table, right? And they will just have this emotional release. And, and many times they don't even know what's going on. They're not really familiar with it. They just, you know, it's labeled as a healing circle. So like, well, you know, I'm going through a bunch of stuff, so I'm going to give it a whirl. And they hop on this virtual table and it's all just bizarro for them, I'm sure. It's still bizarro for me, you know, and I'm leading the thing or co-leading it. <laughs> and, um, and, and they just have this emotional release. You're like, I, I've never experienced anything like that. And, you know, that, that story kind of pales in comparison to what, what you had mentioned. But I guess my point is that this stuff happens all the time. How do we get more people to open up to the idea of doing something that's maybe a little bizarro, but extremely helpful? How do you get more people to, I mean, that's what, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm trying to um, promote the possibility of just stepping into something, maybe the unusual that can really be helpful for so many people. And then yes. when you experience some of the stuff that these people are experiences experience, like I, um, I was wowed when it hit me, you obviously went through, like it was, it was not so for you. Um, it, it, Oftentimes it's just over the top, weird, awesome, powerful healing. And how do we get more people to open their minds to step into that power that, um, you know, the, how do we get people to help themselves? <laughs> yeah. Such a great question. Um, start small, start, you start small. Um, because part 
part of like, it's not just about experiencing the weirdness. It's, it's experiencing the connection with, with yourself. So like for, I've been, I've been asking this question for a while. How do we get people to try things they never have before? It's not just having them try that thing. It's having them actually seek it out within themselves, the healing. It starts with the healing within. It starts with maybe holding a circle about talking about emotions and then maybe just holding hands, understanding the power of touch, understanding the power of good energy, understanding the power of dialogue, understanding the power of vulnerability. When you, cause those are the core foundations. When you can get to the core foundations of human connection, then you will open yourself up to new things. It's not just, you need to do energy healing. It's well, why the power. So when you can experience yourself as an energetic being, when you can experience compassion, when you can experience connection and integrity and honesty and trust with someone outside of yourself and within yourself, then that will cultivate, that will cultivate the environment for people to do something they might not, they might not normally do because they're advocating for their own healing journey. So I think it starts small with the little things, the little conversations and gathering people in groups and talking and being real and authentic and raw. Like I'm, I'm probably, I, I've been thinking about starting, I've been wanting to start um, a circle of nursing journey that has nothing to do with any energy healing or anything. It just, it's people holding hands in a circle and talking like, st- like um, about their trauma or talking. And then, and then maybe opening up and saying, would you mind if I receive, if I sent you some good vibes or if I sent you a hug, that's the same thing as energy healing is the same thing. It's the intention to heal the intention for someone to feel the love within themselves so they can set themselves free from their own self-imprisoned mind state. So I think it starts small with groups. I think that when we, at, when we are simply talking about advocating for your healing journey, like everybody wants to heal. Everyone wants to feel happiness. Everyone wants to feel love and live a joyful life, but it's releasing that victim mentality that, oh, I can't, I'm not worthy. I don't deserve it. So maybe starting with that dialogue of, of worthiness to receive of, of that you do have the ability to heal. And then once you get to those foundations, then everything else will just naturally unfold. That's a, I feel like that's the natural organic process of evolution in itself. Gotcha. So well, that's how, that's how I feel about it. Well, this has been great. Is there anything that you wanted to add before we uh, start to wrap this up? Mm, no, just um, uh, everybody is at their own pace and to trust the divine timing and everything. Um, everybody is on a journey. Everyone has a purpose and a mission here and just letting everyone know that you matter, that your existence is helping to change the world. And every moment is a miracle and every moment try to be in some sort of ceremony to celebrate yourself because that will attract more of that and that there are people out there there's good people out there and that you're not alone that we've never been alone and that this journey can be challenging but it's worth it and we can do this together we are a team we are one human race and um the best is yet to come 